And now we bring in a Republican congressman, Texas Representative Pete Sessions. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. You bet. So we've talked to you before, and you made it very clear that you do not regret objecting to the certification of the 2020 election. You also said that you don't support the current investigation by the January 6th House Committee. But on this one-year mark, I'm curious about your own experience on January 6th. Where were you when the Capitol was breached, and, and where was your staff? Yes, thank you very much. I was uh, in the beginning in the building and then went over to the floor and uh, was uh, back and forth. And it was uh, over some period of time, and then a determination was made to please leave leave the uh, Capitol and move back to your office, and, and I did. How concerned were you at the time? You know, the concern that we all have uh, is uh, criminality, and there's no question in my mind that uh, the people who participated in this were criminals. There's no question in my mind that that people also who were there uh, did not walk into the building to destroy it. So it was a criminal element that was the problem. We watched out my windows there in Rayburn of uh, probably 50 police cars and at least a thousand people walked by and no one struck the vehicles. No one was trying to do anything. Criminal elements that were at the leadership of this are the people who, who battled our police, uh, our brave police who, who came in and stormed the, the, the doors. Those are the criminals. And I think the Department of Justice has those people. I'd like to just get into your headspace on that day one year ago. At any time, did you feel any fear? Uh, disappointment. Uh, there's always disappointment about the knowledge that there are people uh, that would use violence, uh, criminal behavior. Uh, the, the facts of the case are we need to move to resolve this issue. We need to move the House of Representatives. We need to move the country. Uh, and this is where Republicans are attempting now, even uh, hopefully on this committee, to say that people who have material information, the speaker, the head of intelligence for the Capitol Hill Police, they need to give an accounting of the story also to the committee, just like uh, the Trump administration officials have done. We need to move to where we understand what happened, who, would, who participated, and then lastly, what would happen if this happened again? What direction and training, and what are the rules of engagement for the Capitol Hill police? They should not be allowed to be at a disadvantage again. Uh, we've spoken to Capitol Hill police officers, campus workers, congressional staffers who've said that they have suffered from post-traumatic stress as a result of the events on January 6th. How did you and your staff come to terms and cope in the aftermath of the attack? Or was that never an issue? Because it doesn't sound like you experienced any fear at any time in that moment. Well, uh, I, I have no doubt that people who were engaged in the fight and the battle uh, in, in the uh, people who were hanging off the Capitol. I have no doubt that, that those people did uh, have, have reoccurring uh, problems, no, no question. I, my staff and I uh, were, in, by and large, in the building across the street and watched much of this that happened. But uh, I, do have, uh, uh, I do have knowledge that there are people who were, were greatly subjected to, to difficult things, just as they are in Portland, just as they are in Minneapolis. And these other police officers who really protect our country need to be, need to be able to have time to express themselves. But it's time for this violence to end in this country on both sides. A Congresswoman Liz Cheney, as you know, was the only sitting House Republican on Capitol Hill during today's anniversary. What message do you think that that sends to the country at large? Why not pay respect to the victims and to the building in which you and your staff work every day? Well, I'll be quite blunt. I did not even know that there was going to be a session of Congress held today. I, am, I was out in Nacogdoches, Texas, in Freestone County, Texas, in Limestone County, Texas today. Uh, I, I had no clue we were being asked to be there. And for someone to hold us accountable for that, that we did not attend for some reason, uh, would not be fair. 
Uh, there are many, many Republicans who uh, feel uh, very badly about what happened. I think it put my party back a number of years in my mind, too, and many people uh, in my family and many of my supporters know it was the wrong way to express yourself. But we have to move past this. We have to move directly to where we can, can work with each other. Uh, and I think Congress has a lot to say about that. And that's why I would like this January 6th committee to, to aim for resolution. As you know, they're, they're going to continue this for one more year. Well, we're not really going to know what happened until these trials start and end. And this is the kind of openness that we need to have in this country to wait and let the process play itself out and then expect that all the people who were a part of this day, certainly material to this, would have to give testimony. Congressman, just like we'll want to follow up on the beginning part of your answer there, because you said you didn't know. I, I, one, I'm, I, I'm curious if you did know, are you suggesting that you would have attended? And two, uh, how did you not know? I mean, wouldn't you have asked potentially to say, hey, it's one year since that really dark day in American history. Are we doing anything to acknowledge it? Uh, we're talking about an official notice, official that, that Congress was expected in. I think probably every day uh, we are in in one way or another. It's whether there are votes or not. And I was uh, unaware. I, I assume there were not votes held today. I could show up any day that I would choose. And when I was chairman of the House Rules Committee, Republicans had the House open almost every day. Uh, but to, to go through a process like this, uh, I think, uh, uh, is is something that obviously was was a political setup. I think it's great that we honor and remember this day, but I think it's more important that what we do is understand what happened, get to the bottom of it, and move past this to where we work together. And, and that is what this January 6th com commission should be doing, is working towards resolution. And you keep talking about, you know, uh, people coming forward in that spirit of, of cooperation. Many of your colleagues, many of the, the top Trump officials, former uh, officials, are refusing uh, to cooperate, are withholding information, are uh, saying that, you know, they are not going to give any testimony willingly, at least. Do you have any concerns uh, for members of your own party who are withholding information? Uh, Mr. Meadows, Mark Meadows, was a former member of this body. Mr. Meadows, as I understand it, as chief of staff, received about 9,000 texts or emails that came to him on or about that day or immediately after. Mr. Meadows has provided every single bit of that to the committee when they asked and to law enforcement. It is my understanding that that was not enough for them. Well, anybody that gets 9,000 emails cannot be responsible for that that comes to him. He was forthright to provide that information. I think this continues to be a political uh, sham. And I will use that word on national TV. We should move directly forward to letting the Department of Justice handle this. And just like 9-11, after we knew what happened, we then worked off the facts of the case. I don't think we know enough about the facts of the case. And the Department of Justice has the authority and the responsibility to move forward on these cases. They should get that done. And then we should learn through public testimony and information that we receive from prosecutors about what actually happened. But, but McCarthy, Bannon, Meadows, do you feel that they should be cooperating? Would you make an appeal to them to participate in the investigation? Well, Mr. Meadows has provided, as I understand it, more than 9,000 pieces of information. Mr. Meadows is cooperating. Okay, how Mr. about McCarthy Meadows or has, Bannon? I think they should participate. I think anyone would see that participation, is, if we have nothing to hide, we should be participatory. But I also believe the Speaker of the House should do the same. And she has failed and said she will not testify. That's equally wrong. 
Congressman Pete Sessions, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.